Welcome everybody. I'm just about to do a tutorial and uh, first class lounge in Chesterfield very kindly let me their dog, their thermometer, and I'm just about to do a tutorial about taking the vital signs of healthy dogs. Um, one of the things you need to be able to demonstrate if you're working towards your level 3 diploma is that you're able to do the vital signs, which is quite important as dog groomers. I get asked as a dog groomer why do we need to be able to do this? And the simple answer is we know what a healthy dog looks like, and in order for us to know what a healthy dog looks like, we should know what the normal values of the dog is. So we should know on a regular basis um, what a West Highland White's pulse should be expected. So what I always ask you to do is when you get a Westie in um, to the salon uh, on a weekly basis, is take the Westie's pulse, or take a Cocker Spaniel's pulse, or take a Labrador's pulse, and that way then you'll get used to, first of all, how to locate the pulse of the dog, but secondly, you'll get used to what a normal Labrador's pulse would feel like or what a normal West Highland White's pulse would feel like. And that would then help you in an emergency situation to know if it's an abnormal. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to go through temperatures, pulse and respiration with a normal dog with everybody. And the thing that everybody gets upset about the most, so I'm going to start with that one first, is the rectal temperature taking. So all we use is just a normal human uh, thermometer, and you can get these you know, from any supermarket. They're about $3.99, I don't know what Martin and Lee pay for theirs, but about $3.99. And when you uh, set it, uh, you just press the button to set it, and it will automatically go onto a human's temperature. So a human's temperature is 37 degrees, but a dog's temperature is 38.1 to 38.9 degrees. So it's a whole degree and a half difference. That's quite important to remember that when you're bathing and blow drying, um, because when you're wetting a dog's coat with water, just because it feels nice to you on your wrist, not doesn't necessarily mean it's nice to the dog, because it can be quite warm, because it's a degree and a half difference in our body temperature. So that's why we normally ask for you to keep the dog's uh, water when you're shampooing the dog a bit lower and more tepid rather than warm. We don't see steam coming off the dog. So when you use this thermometer, you just turn it on and it will beep itself and it will zoom to 37 degrees. And all you're doing is you're just literally going to insert this tip into the dog's bottom. So it's not the whole thing, it's just that tiny tip. And most dogs tolerate it. They to tolerate it particularly well if you don't hang on to the tail whilst you're doing it, so they're not aware that you're doing it. Um, you don't necessarily have to lubricate it unless you've got a tiny you know, wee chihuahua or something like that. I don't tend to lubricate it. Um, and when you're actually going to put it in the dog's bottom, I'll, tell, I'll show you now, I'll pretend this is the dog's bottom, I'm actually going to put it at the side of the mucous membrane, so it's actually touching the mucous membrane. It's not actually going in the middle of the bum. The reason for that is, you know yourselves being dog groomers, what happens when you touch the dog's bottoms is sometimes they do that little pulsing and sometimes that poo pops in and out. And that basically what I might be doing is might be taking the core temperature of the poo, which I don't want that, I just want to take his core temperature. So I'm going to turn it on and wait for it to beep to tell me it's ready to take. So it's gone now, it went to 37 and then it's gone to this sign here. So it just basically says it's ready to go. Yeah. So I'm gently, we've got a Chloe, so Chloe's my assistant today. So I'm going to find our bottom hole of our dog, which I can see here, yeah? And I'm gently just going to insert the tip, she says as she's pushing me out. So I'm inserting the tip now, and I've literally just, uh, and I'm not holding on, but you can see she's push, trying to push me out. They do that, don't they, all the time. But I've, not, I've only got the tip in, and as you can see, the dog didn't react. So it doesn't hurt the dog, yeah? Um, it's not a, a veterinary procedure, it's nothing like that. It is just basic skills that we require and actually I don't know whether you can see on the camera but actually the digits are going up very slowly so at the moment it's reading 37.8 this will beep 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 when when it's ready so basically when it's cooked basically so I just have to stand here for as long as it takes now at first class lounge they have air conditioned salon here so we're all quite nice and cool and relaxed so the dogs are obviously quite a nice temperature as I said to you, the normal temperature of a dog is 38.1 to 38.9. That's a normal range of a dog. I think in most of Heaven's textbooks, it says 38.3 to 38.7. The reason it says that is we're preparing you for your examinations, and that's what the exam question is. But as a, um, as a, a person that's worked in veterinary practices, I know the normal range is 38.1 to 38.9. 
And the job's temperature does vary. So you might find when they've come in immediately to the salon and they don't want to be here, or they've come in a hot car, that the temperature will be high. So expect that to be normal and don't take it until they've managed to cool down a little bit. It does, yeah. yeah. But I'm quite happy that it's not changing from okay. 38. So I'm just going to remove it out of her bum. Oh, it just went up to 38.1 so I took it out. It did. Yeah. So we, we are normal for normal. <laughs> when you take a, a dog's um, temperature, it doesn't mean anything in particular. Of course, if it's 39, we're in a dangerous yeah, you know, danger zone. But the dog's temperature doesn't really mean anything without actually knowing what the pulse is doing or what the colour of the mucous membranes are doing or what they are, you know, what the respiratory rate is doing. So you always take these and you kind of paint a picture by looking at them all together. The way to sterilise this now is to use your animal safe or whatever gels you use normally and just give it a spray and clean and then obviously it's ready for you know ready for the next dog to use. Be really gentle. So it's a real gentle touch and I'm just gonna move my finger now and you'll feel you'll feel like just there, you'll feel like a drain pipe running against the leg. Yes. Can you feel it? Yeah. It's a really gentle touch. So when you're actually touching it, it is a gentle touch. If you put pressure on you act as a human tourniquet. So can you feel it beating? Yeah. yeah. So I'll let Ruby feel it beating and then I'll get one of you to actually uh, take it. Hers is quite deep. So it's always worth taking the temperature of every dog that comes in. It takes you uh, the temperature pulse. Can you feel it? You're probably feeling too, too firm. It's a very gentle feel. Yeah. Can you feel it now? Yeah. It is a gentle touch, isn't yeah. it? Really gentle. Um, if you take it like whilst you're doing your health check, or just you, you do it while you're grooming, because you, you don't have to stand there and actually take the beat. So it's an idea to feel it on every dog that comes in, just quickly, just so you can locate it. You're not actually going to take the, the, the pulse, but it's just so you can locate it. And that way then, if you have got a, an emergency situation, you know exactly where to look for on a Westie, or where to look for on a Labrador. Does that make sense? Obviously, the skinnier the dog, the easier it is to take. So you feel it all the time, and when you take the pulse, what we're actually doing is we want to know the beats per minute. So the pulse rate is basically how fast the heart's beating. But rather than standing here for a whole minute, which is quite a long time for a dog, and also for us, and in an emergency situation, a hell of a long time, what we actually do is we actually look at a clock or we get somebody to count us in for 15 seconds. So we say, you know, count us in for 15 seconds. And you count how many beats you can actually feel in that 15 seconds. But because we need to get it to the 60 seconds that makes per minute, we then multiply that by four. Does that make sense? And if you don't like multiplying by four, you can do it for 30 seconds and multiply by two, yeah? So it's quite straightforward, that is there. But the, the pulse rate of a dog normally beats between 60 and 120 beats a minute. So that was 20 beats, yeah? So 20 times four is two, four, six, eight, so that's 80 beats per minute. So I said to your normal heart rate's between 60 and 120. So I'm expecting hers to be slightly faster, actually, because normally something like a Great Dane would be like 60 beats a minute, and something like a little Chihuahua or a cat might be 135 beats per minute. So she's actually really chillaxed, really chilled. But we know that because the temperature's so low as well. So another good So another good indication of, of the dog's health is also how fast they're breathing. So usually when we take a dog's res respiratory rate, it's always best to do it when they're in the kennel, relaxed, or in the, in the crate. We're gonna look at hers now, and she's breathing a little bit faster because she'd just been groomed. She thought she was going home, and she's come onto the table to be messed with me, by me, first of all. So that's why she's looking for mum all the time. But we usually stand from behind the dog, and what we're looking for is we're looking to see the inhalation or exhalation from the dog. And it's better sometimes if you place your hands on the dog rather than using your eyes because the dogs have got so much fur sometimes you can't see it. And what we do is we choose to either count the ins or the outs breaths. We don't count the ins and the outs. So the ins or the outs. And you do exactly the same method. So you count the ins or the outs for those 15 seconds and then you would multiply it by four to get to the breaths per minute. And most dogs breathe on average between 10 and 35 breaths per minute. So it's not a lot. But you all know that when you've had like a, an old um, Labrador come into the salon and they're in the crate and they look really relaxed. And then you look again and you think, are they breathing? And sometimes they do, don't they? They take that big, really nice, relaxed breath and they hold it there for ages. I bet you find that Pippa, uh, Martin and Lee's dogs are doing the same now. She might be breathing quite, quite slow because she's more on and she's quite relaxed you know, about being in the environment. So we're literally looking to see how, how, you know, how deep they breathe. And obviously this dog here at the moment, she's breathing faster than she should normally. 
because although she's been very good and well behaved, she doesn't show any signs of stress, she obviously is because she's upset that we've got her ill. So that, does that make sense for your breaths per minute? And the other sign that you could look for, which we always look for, is we look for the colours of the mucous membranes. If you do the sitting gills exam, the mucous membrane is the mouth, the mucous membrane is the eye here, the mucous membrane is the vulva, is the penis, is the bottom. That's the mucous membrane, so it's not just in the mouth. So that's an exam question, and that's what a lot of students get wrong. They think it's, the mucous membrane is just the mouth, and it's not. It's obviously any part of the tissue that's you know, uh, in the, within the body. So what we normally look for is we normally look for a nice salmon pink colour. Hers is quite red. Um, so uh, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't to say that was heat stress. We know it's not because the temperature is 38 degrees. And a good way of checking circulation is by we press, and this is called the capillary refill. And when we let go, it springs back to normal colour, and it should spring back to one or two seconds, and that suggests that we've got a nice circulation. If it was prolonged, then either the heart's really, really slow, or we might be going into shock. So all these signs together are really nice, and for a dog groomer, it's really important that we know the early signs of illness. I'm not suggesting you take dogs' temperatures for the sake of it, but you need to know how to do it in case you have an incident where the dog looks like it's just something not quite right. At least you can take the temperature and you can say, yes, the dog's got an elevated temperature or it's got a low temperature. And at least then you can then, call when you call up the vets, you, you're a professional, you can actually say the dog's body temperature is 39 degrees, what do I do? Or the dog's body temperature is 37, what do I do? And at least they paint a nice picture for them.